Now that's what NBA basketball is. 10 games. We've got a bunch of things, 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 a bunch of things to break down. Fantasy basketball is back like it never left. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy, your daily NBA fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd. And do you know what up there Kazali and Lucky you're with Amy have in common? I'll let you figure it out. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at locked on fantasy basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. Start the season with a big return on Fangio. As a new customer, you can place a $5 bet and get $200 in bonus bets with that first bet. Get to fangio.com to get started. Thank you also for making locked on fantasy basketball your first Listen, first listen every day. We are free and we're available on all platforms. Also, go to LockedOnDaily.com. We've got a newsletter for every team, whatever your favorite team is, a newsletter, LockedOnDaily.com. All right. I'm not going to muck around too much, although I probably will. Because we've got 10 games we've got to cover on Wednesday, the NBA's real opening night, where majority of teams have played, still six that we're waiting on. So far, one rookie as a starter. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But yeah, this is, uh, again, this draft class, not super strong. We all know that, I think. There'll be deniers out there, but yeah, not super strong. And we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we want to get straight into is covering off some of the news and two things that came out today. There was, or there is going to be an alleged investigation into Joel Embiid not playing. I'll solve the investigation for you now. He's knees rooted. Simple. Yeah, I know he played in the Olympics. Cool. I know that. Didn't look particularly healthy, did he? Is there a chance? Is there a chance that him playing the Olympics might have made it worse? Possibly. Possibly. There you go. Investigation. He's missing the rest of this week at least, Embiid. We know that we faded him hard on this channel, not as hard as the second guy on this list, because his knee's done. Multiple meniscus surgeries. He's bad. It is terrible. It causes so many problems. It's, it's documented. So I don't know what this investigation is going to find. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's hurt, so we're being careful. Okay. Update on Kawhi. And amazingly, some people took this update to be a positive thing. Oh, it says just, yeah, just, it says weeks. Yeah, cool. The Clippers and Kawhi never lie. Never. Ever, never, ever, ever lie about his injuries. Never. It's, never, never. They are always transparent. Do not take this as a positive update. Do not, look, th- remember three weeks ago? Now he'll be ready opening night. You remember that one? Now he's, we're bracing for him not to be there for weeks so that we can get ready for him to be available later in the season. Just don't believe it. I'm not saying that he's going to be out all season. I don't know that. I've got no idea. But them having the information pushed out, oh, it's just a few, just weeks garbage. They lie all the time. They have no benefit of the doubt with any of this stuff with Leonard. We'll talk about the Clippers and their game later on today. But there's no benefit of the doubt here. It should be very obvious. Do not believe a single thing. Oh, that's really good news. We'll be back in weeks. Absolutely not. Three weeks ago, media day, which was like first of second of October. Yeah, he's not going to do some work now. Um, no, by the way, surgery had surgery. Didn't tell you that one. We'll tell you that right now. Yeah, no, no, I won't expect him there for opening night. As we would say in the old schoolyard, if you and this one's only a video thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's where we're at with that. In case you're wondering, I did the wank motion. Let's look at some trends across fantasy basketball waiver wires. What happened? Who was added? Were they smart? We'll find out. Santi Aldama, the most added player over the last 24 hours. Jaron Jackson's out one game, Wednesday today. Maybe he's out there next game. Santi, totally fine to stream him in. I don't think there's any long-term value there. I think that should be relatively clear, but that's where we're at with him. Um, Wendell Carter Jr., one of the most added players. Solid enough from him today. Locked in as the starter, back healthy. I don't mind an out of him. His upside is relatively limited, but we know that. I don't get this. Why is Mitchell Robinson one of the most out of players? Don't do that. Nah, don't do that. What the hell is that? Jordan Clarkson, one of the most out of players. I talked about him on the streaming show saying, hey, I was really shocked to see how low his roster percentage was. I don't think he's a must-roster player by any stretch, but yeah, adding him makes sense. 
Andre Drummond, the big avocado. Embiid is out. Just got to be rostered. And then Ben Simmons. Talk about him later on as well. If slash when the wheels fall off, you move on. But he should be added. That one, I also think, is, is relatively obvious. It turns out there are still a lot of people playing fantasy basketball who don't really understand the best way to get things out of it because the most dropped player is Jaden McDaniels. And I am not going to sit here and tell you that Jaden McDaniels is a good 12-team league player because he's not. But I would have thought that you added him because the Wolves played Tuesday and Thursday. And there were only two teams that did that. But did you dis- get discouraged that he played only, not you, unless this was you, and then it is you that I'm talking to, because he only played 16 minutes, he had five fouls. You added him for the two games. And if you dropped him, you've eliminated that. What are you doing? Sam Hauser dropped again. Why? Now I get it. Hauser is also got a questionable tag. But surely, part of the appeal there was to get the Thursday game as well. Noah Clowney dropped before the games even started. Which, and I believe, I believe we've got this going. If you want to drop Noah Clowney. Get that garbage out of here! Do it. Kelly Linick dropped. Sure, shouldn't have been drafted. Get rid of him. Keon Ellis. Well, the Kings don't plan till tomorrow, but I guess the news that Kevin Herter is back and healthy and might start, that's totally okay if you wanted to do that. And then people drop Lonzo Ball. Again, why'd you draft him? What what has changed in the three days? What happened? I I don't get it. I do not get it. But that's okay. We don't always have to get everything. Let's talk about games. Ten of them. Um, as expected, when I talked about changing the look of the box score on the page yesterday, there were people who liked it, but there was always going to be someone who said, hey, it looks different to before. I find it harder to read, I, which I don't really understand because it's bigger, but that's okay. But one criticism that I did understand of that was talking about how, hey, can we have the final score up on the screen? Yep, which the new box score, the NBA one, didn't have that. So I've been tinkering. It's not going to be perfect today, but we've made some changes. So let's see how these box scores look. We're still going with one team per per page, but let's take a look. The Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons. Your first game. Um, Detroit kept this one close, but Indiana gets there in the end. Miles Turner, he was the first player to come out of the game for the Pacers, but he ended up playing 36 minutes. He had 20 points, nine rebounds, and four blocks. Now, last season, he played 28 or 27 minutes a night, so I wouldn't fully expect that, but Isaiah Jackson was out, and then James Wiseman came in, played five minutes, and suffered an injury they're calling a calf injury. But when we get the update tomorrow, do not be shocked if that is a torn Achilles and he's out for the season. I don't know that that is true, but that is exactly the sort of mechanism of a torn Achilles. We will we will find out. But that, regardless if it's a torn Achilles or not, it looks like it's multiple weeks out. The guy they had playing backup center was Enrique Freeman. He's very undersized, so that's why Turner played a million minutes. Siakam had 19, 8, and 9. Pretty good game from Pascal there with two steals. And Tyrese Halliburton, someone already, again, the overreactions are flowing. Man, tell me why Tyrese Halliburton's the worst first-round pick of all time, old mate told me. Well, I said, I won't tell you that because it's a lie. But I like, he, he just shot poorly. He had 15, 5, and 4 with three steals and two blocks. He took 18 shots, which is the most on the team with a 28 usage. Okay, 33% is not good, but what if instead of you know, 6 of 18, what if it's 8 of 18 at four points on, then it's 19, 5, 4, 3, and 2. You'd be pretty okay with it. Like, stop panicking. Ben Matherin, big scoring night. I expect that people will add him after this. 19 points, 7 of 9 from the line, 63 from the field. I wouldn't bother. It is good to see what he did, but the impact of him doing that means it's just less to do for someone like Andy Nempard. Now, Nempard played a lot of minutes, 35 of them, 8 points, 8 shots. The 7 assists are nice. We were sort of worried, and we talked about how there was a lot of breakout talk for Nempard. It wasn't me that was talking that way, but that was talked about through the general media, I guess. But we remember... We remembered here that when he started games for Halliburton last season, he was mid. Now he's mid again. John Armstrong. Get that garbage out of here! Nee Smith got into foul trouble, which he always does, but we're not rostering him anyway. Although I look at the roster percentages and they are through the roof on Aaron Nee Smith. Get that garbage out of here! Why, I have no idea. But please, you don't need to do that. And then we had an 11-man rotation. Jarris Walker in the first half, and then he was done. And Ben Shepard played the second half. So, of course, we can ignore absolutely all of that. Let us um, move on to the other side of this game, the Detroit Pistons. 
They were good early on. Now, they started the lineup. We thought they would. Tim Hardaway in place of Asar Thompson. He played 29 minutes with 14 points. Nothing else. And four threes. Do not fall into the trap of adding him. The overreactions flowed when Cade missed his first five shots. He ended up with 28, 5, and 8 with two threes. Six of six from the line. Now, still obviously work to do on that field goal because it's only 44%. That's really bad. But he dominated the ball and he dominated the game for Detroit. The worries we had with Jalen Duran in terms of upper minutes limit. 30 only. He had 13 and 13, 100% shooting, but that's because Isaiah Stewart is the backup center. And that is the concern that we voiced a lot about Duran. Jaden Ivey went back to looking like Jaden Ivey. He couldn't maintain 60% shooting, shockingly enough. He had 17, 5, and 4 on 39%. He got to line nine times, which is very, very sexy. Hold on, though. But, yeah, it wasn't this gigantic, gigantic performance like some of those you know, fluke preseason games. When I say fluke, because nobody's a 60% shooter from three. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. Bad game from the Thick Hogsman. 13 points, but nothing else. Like two rebounds? Yuck. He did have one assist, so that's, I guess, nothing. And no assists either. No free throws. Not no assists. He had one. Sorry, no free throws. Like, okay, that's that stinks. We move to the next one. We wait. We hope he improves. Bad start. Leaky Beasley had 14 points in his 28 minutes, but him and Tim Hardaway, that's what they do. They get points. They get threes. If you need that, go for your life. It was weird, though to see Simone Fontecchio play only 15 minutes. He missed all four of his shots, so are we getting Mike Brown here? Maybe. Well, Rugged Ronnie Holland had six in his 15. Long way away from Holland being able to impact games, but I thought it was an impressive um, an impressive start from him. I, I, I just like the way that he plays. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Game Time. New features. They are always banging out the new features, and one of them, of course, is Game Time Picks, making getting tickets to see your favorite teams play even easier. Filtering out the fluff, getting you all the things you need only, instead of having to sift through all of the different options that are there. They just provide the good stuff. That's on top of all the other things, the event protection cancellation issues, the um, uh, lowest price guarantee, the seat views, the all-in pricing, which you can turn on the app as well, so you don't get surprised by additional fees. You just see the full price, and you go, well, that's how much I'm paying. I know what I'm up for. Flash deals, the tickets prices drop the closer you get to game time as well. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, redeem L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, we got through one game. Let's do the second one. Nets and Hawks. Okay. Um, we'll start, as we should, on the Brooklyn side of things. The Hawks win at 120-116, the final score here. And Cam Thomas did the thing. We know that he's going to shoot a lot. He took 27 shots, one free throw. He had 36 points with seven threes. The three steals are a gigantic bonus. This is what we had him for. I don't think that he's going to be a great player. I don't think that he's going to make this team good, but he's going to shoot a lot, and it worked out fantastically. We only got 24 minutes from Ben Simmons today. But he had 6, 5, and 8 with a block. I think that's rosterable. If it goes south, if it goes tits up, get rid of him. I think it's totally reasonable to have Ben Simmons on your roster in realistically most forms of the game. Um, they brought Nick Claxton off the bench because he'd missed all of preseason with a hamstring. Then he wasn't even the first guy to come off the bench in the game. And then he got ejected. So it was a bad night. 7-5 and five with a block in 15 minutes. And 1-4 of four from the line just to make it worse. I don't think we need to worry, but it looks like they'll be pretty careful in ramping him back up. So they started, however you want to phrase it, whether it was Dorian Finney-Smith or Ben Simmons at starter. Finney-Smith had 8-8 eight eight at center, sorry. 8-8 eight eight with two blocks, two threes. Like the two blocks are nice. I don't think we need to care too much about that. But the big... Well, let's talk about the other starters first, actually. Cam Johnson was like, fine... 14 points, I could hold him for now, I guess. And then Dennis Schroeder had 13, 3, and 7. And this is Schroeder in a nutshell. No, get me out of this bloody great big nutshell. Seven assists in 34 minutes for Dennis Schroeder. That's fantastic. 13 points on 16 shots. He's not. He's just so low upside. You can, Absolutely, you can have him. The assists are nice. The minutes are nice. I don't think they stick at that level, but that's fine. What was interesting is that Jalen Wilson played 34 minutes. Another Jalen. He had 16 and 4. He didn't do it through extreme shooting, 43%, but he did get to the line eight times, which is obviously very fluky. And I don't know that we can expect 34 minutes out of Jalen Wilson, but if I'm in a deeper league, he got the priority over Zaya Williams, over Noah Clowney. As for Clowney, 
even with Claxton limited, even with Claxton ejected, even with Sharp out, we got 15 minutes of, of clowning. Now, clown stuff does happen at this time of the year. Coaches trying to figure it I've got so many examples of it today. But you have to look like it might take two weeks. Is Clowney good enough to hold on and wait and miss your chance at other guys? I don't think so. I like Clowney. I think he's gonna ha- can have a really good run of things, but I'm not sure that we need to hold on to that. We'll go on to the um, Atlanta side of the equation. The Hawks do get the win in this one, and they started unbelievably Clint Capella, but it's not all bad. It's not all bad, because we'll talk about the center. Capella played 20 minutes. He had six and seven with a block, and that means that, yeah, it was a Nyeka Kongwu time. 28 minutes, 28 points, eight rebounds, three blocks, 92% from the field and 100% from the line. Now, obviously, he will not be that efficient. What is the most important is the way the minutes went. The blocks are great. And Yekura Kongu needs to be rostered in all leagues. I don't care if you've been burnt by me telling you for five years, which hasn't happened, that he was going to be the starter. Literally never happened. I did tell you this year he was going to be the starter, and so far I'm wrong, but I'm very happy with those minutes. But he's got to be rostered. Trey Young had 30 and 12 with two threes and 16 free throws as well. Unbelievable. But I guess one of the other bigger stories is another must roster player. Like if you are holding Dyson Daniels and Nyekura, sorry, that was the spoiler. If you are holding Noah Clowney and Nyekura Kongwu and Dyson Daniels are available, come on, make the move. Daniels played 35 minutes. That is what's unbelievable to me. I thought he might get to 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 15, five and two, five steals and a block. Now, obviously he will not get five steals, but getting those minutes is unbelievably good. Must roster player. Bogdan Bogdanovich, 28 minutes, 8 points, 2 blocks, bad night, must hold. As for Zach Rishishe, well, we thought that he'd be able to uh, overtake old mate DeAndre Hunter. He did not. Hunter wasn't particularly good, 12 and 6. Do not entertain for a second adding DeAndre Hunter, by the way. Rishishe had 7 points on 25% shooting. His fantasy profile is not good enough to suggest he is a must hold. If we took a flyer on him, we thought he might start and add little bits and pieces here. I don't care. If you want to move on, do it. Get that garbage out of here. He's not good enough to hold. Also, the other thing, bad night from Jalen Johnson. And I highlighted this many times. Love Jalen Johnson. But the second half of last season, his shooting numbers fell off completely. And then he went one of, no, three of eight from the line and four of nine from the field. Bad. He ended with 11 and 10 with three steals and a block. Don't worry. But those shooting numbers were a genuine concern at the end of last season, and they, they flared up again, and we'll see where that leads us to. But yeah, that uh, was a thing that happened, absolutely. Next game. Um, oh, that looks wrong. Got to fix that up. Oh, no, it looks right. What am I talking about? I thought it looked wrong. It looks right. It's just the Orlando Magic played so many bloody players in this game as they smashed the Heat 116-97, the final score here. Um... We'll talk about the Heat in a sec. We'll start with the Magic. They went with the expected starting lineup. Wendell Carter, 8 points, 14 rebounds, 2 steals. That's what I mean. Like That's that's pretty good. The percentages are not good. I don't think it's a must roster player, but he's going to be the starter. Boncaro, 33 and 11, 1 steal, 1 block. And would you look at that? 50% from the field and 5 of 6 from the line. No, not saying it holds. But this is something that I hear from many people. Not necessarily analysts. Sometimes analysts, but analysts commenters, um, stuck-up asshole know-it-alls, whoever it is, when they'll say, Paolo, he's going to kill you in percentages. I'll say, yeah, he was he was bad. That doesn't mean that he'll be bad in the future. It doesn't mean that he'll be good in the future. But we've got to get away from this idea of looking at what happened last season as the entirety of the player's career from moving forward. Oh, he can't stay healthy. Oh, okay, there's one year. Oh, I can't shoot threes. Oh, there's one year. We've got to understand that things change a lot. And I highlighted this a lot with Paolo, saying, what do you have to make? Two extra field goals per week. Or two extra field goals every five games. Just convert two misses to two makes, and he became a 49% shooter. Like That is what we're talking about. And I am not saying this holds, but it's an unbelievably good start. Speaking of good starts, Franz Wagner, can he shoot? Maybe. 23, 4, and 4, two steals, three threes. Got to be loving that. And out of absolutely nowhere, Gaz Harris drops an 18-pointer with six threes. Okay, Gaza. Just quickly, if you've got Kentavious Caldwell Pope, you haven't been listening to this show, so welcome for the first time. 
Get that garbage out of here. Three points in 25 minutes. Well, Mr. Black played 28 minutes and had 10, 6, and 4. I wasn't even sure that Anthony Black would be in the rotation. I don't think he's very good. But they played him. They played him ahead of Jed Howard. And he played a lot. He played a lot. Let's talk about Jalen Suggs. Because he only played 13 minutes. You go, what is happening? Why do they play Black over him? Well, Suggsy had foul trouble very early in the game. Simple as that. They were rolling. They ran their bench for the final five plus minutes of the game as well. Nothing to be worried about. John Isaac hurt his hip. You'll be shocked to hear that. They said he's fine, which is feeling a bit sore. This is the, the problem always with Isaac. He only played 11 minutes here. He's just, something's always going to pop up. So don't panic on Suggs. Unbelievable start from Bunkero. Carter, maybe. Don't do anything with Mr. Black. And drop Contavious Caldwell Pope. That will bring us onto the Miami side of the equation, which of course was terrible. And I don't know, would you say that I'm laughing? Maybe. Contract year, Jimmy Butler scored three points in 26 minutes on 13% shooting. He had five assists and a steal and a block, and that's great. One of two from the line, but I don't know, man. I thought that with money on the line, he would have just tried. That's just me. I would try. I would try hard, but I guess Jimmy just doesn't want it enough. <sighs> Tui Regier had 19, 6, and 5 with two blocks and didn't shoot that well. Well, Tyler Hero had 14, 5, and 3. They're solid enough lines. This team stinks, though. Well, sorry, let me rephrase. They stunk. Three-point shooting legend Bam Adebayo didn't hit one. He took two of them. He had 9 and 5. 7 of 10 from the line is not nice, but it's honestly just a terrible game all around. Also, Khalil Ware. Not in the rotation. Un- Look, I like Eric Spolter. Really good coach. You got smashed. You're playing Tom Bryant, who was replacing Kevin Love. They were your backup center options. Like, I don't want to say me- too many rude words, but like, get fucking for real. What are we doing? Get that garbage out of here. Where will take that job at some point, but you know what? You got to make him earn it. You got to make the rookies earn it. What are we doing? What's happening? Why? These guys are trash. Shout out to Kevin Love, who I, I do really like as a player. Come on. Anyway, drop Khalil Ware. Hayward Highsmith played 30 minutes. That's why he lost. Nine points, two steals, and a block for him. We don't do anything there. Well, little Chungus. Nice game from uh, Nikola Jovic. 15 points, triple one. I'll keep an eye on that. I don't think that I would add him, but I'll keep an eye. 19 minutes, Jaime Jaquez. 13, five, and three. Bad free throws, subpar field goals. Like, I, don't, I don't think it's there for him, I, but I am a certified hater. You know that. I hate Jaime Jaquez. I hate him. I, I, I think he's done so many crimes that haven't even been com- reported on. That's how much I hate him. But it was just, it seemed obvious to me that like it was going to be, it's, and this game is hard to judge too much off. So don't make too many crazy moves apart from dropping Khalil Ware. But a very, very disappointing night, I would say, for Miami overall. Yeah, very disappointing night for um, Heat Culture. Today's episode is brought to you by Price picks. Price picks is the best place to get real small, real money, sports action. That's the word. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award, awarded winnings, Price picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to everyone. You just pick more or less on up to, well, a minimum two players, up to six, put them into an entry, and bang, off you go. You can play Price picks alongside guys like Joe Budden, MMA champ, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Drewski, you can even find those on the community plays under the promos tab on the app. And this is the best place for you to get real money sports action. So join the over 10 million uh, users and sign up today. And there's a promo as well. If you sign up today, you can get 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to get that $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. So you just look at individual stats. You choose more or less. You put them together with an entry and bang, off you go. So download the app today and use the code LOCKEDONNBA to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. So download the app today, use the code Locked On NBA to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price picks, run your game. All right, let's do the next one. The Milwaukee Bucks up against the Philadelphia 76ers. We'll go to the Bucks side of things. They get the uh, pretty comfortable victory here in the end, 124-109. 38 minutes for Damian Lillard. Dr. Rivers just not going easy on him at all. He had 30 and 9 with 6 assists and 6 dribbles. Really strong. No defensive stats, but that is a great, great sign from Lillard. While Yanni played the 31 and had 25, 14, and 7. 
with a block. Love that. Apart from, of course, 16 free throw attempts, of which he hit nine. Yuck. Brook Lopez, a million minutes as well. Now, at the end of last season, we saw Brook was really dropping down under Dr. Rivers, but 36 minutes, 10 and 8. Six assists from, from Brook and six blocks. An unbelievably good starter. I won't gonna, I'm not going to tell you there's sell highs or buy lows right now. I'd consider that with Brook, but that is really strong. Um, Punch Bob had 16 and three there with two steals and a block. So yeah, that's how you know things are going your way when Bobby Portis is grabbing um, defensive stats. And the, even the artist formerly known as Torian Prince, he shot 86%. He had 16 points with four threes. Please ignore that. I would not be, I would not have drafted. I would not bother holding him. I would not be rostering Gary Trent. Get that garbage out of here. He had 11 points in 34 minutes. He didn't have a steal. He had no assists. He is just not a very good fantasy player who in the past has been inflated by the flawed nature of rankings. I would not bother with him at all. As for the rest of the rotation, while you'd be shocked to know the young guys didn't play, it's Doc Rivers. Yeah, what an absolutely stunning development that is from the big fella, Glenn. Let's go on to the next part of this, and that is the Sixers, which is hard to judge. There was no um, Joel Embiid. There was no Paul George. They started KJ Martin over Caleb Martin, but then the second half, switcheroo from old, old mate Nick Nurse. Maxi, a million minutes, 39 minutes, 25 and 6, steal and a block, horrible shooting, even from the line. So that, that's really hurtful, and that, that, that hurts my feelings a lot. But also, last season, he was. Um, this happened a lot. We saw this, that the, when Embiid's not there, that legendary efficiency is very hard to keep up. Caleb Martin played 37 minutes coming off the bench. 12 and 9 with a block is good. I think he's more of a 14-team league guy, but... If he plays 37 a night, then you've got to at least consider him in the 12-team stream zone. We had 13, 4, and 6 from Lowry getting minutes, but the big avocado, only 25 minutes from Drummond. Eh, Mid-game, 10 and 13. Drummond, we know. I would hold him, but also, at some point, Embiid is going to play, and Drummond will not be rosterable outside of stashing, which wastes a roster spot. So if something like if a Kongwu is on your wire, I would actually make that move. If Drummond's your worst player, I would make that move. Ubre, I, 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 I know, I know, right? I just there's something about this handsome man that I hate for basketball. I hate him. Lo- seems like a good guy. I wish I had uh, the looks of an angel like this man. But I just hate him as a player. Twenty-one and two, no defensive stats, inefficient. I thought that he'd be a really strong ad without Paul George, and maybe he will be. But also, I should have listened. He sucks. He's bad. Eric Gordon started, and I. I used this a lot for Clay Thompson last year. Maybe we need to throw it around a bit. Uh, he might be just absolutely rooted. Solid game from Gershon Yebisale. 10 and 4, 3 steals, 26 minutes as the backup. While Embiid is out, he's con- considered an option, I would say, for a lot of formats, but probably not Probably not 12 teamers. 14s, go for it. KJ Martin, who. Um, did start, played 15 minutes for three points. It was always very weird when coaches... Well, it's not weird. It's relatively common when coaches try to outthink themselves. But I think that is what happened here in terms of KJ starting over Caleb. And I'm pretty certain that it won't happen in the next one. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they smashed the injured Toronto Raptors. 136-106 is your final here. And what got me absolutely lifting this desk up is the Koala, Evan Mobley. Now... I said that Kenny Atkinson's going to limit players' minutes. This is not what I meant. This is a blowout, right? But 27 minutes for Mobley, 25 and 8, two steals, three blocks, 64% shooting, perfect from the line. Let's actually go. Oh, my God. Let's go. Jarrett Allen was solid, four blocks, 14 and 7. Donovan Mitchell, 21, 3 and 3, with three steals. Good from him. The only thing that wasn't good was Darius Garland. Now, he got four fouls. I think he picked up his fourth either at the end of the first half or beginning of the second that's why his minutes were low. He also just shot horribly, 25%. If someone's got Darius Garland and they're looking back to last season, this actually might be a chance to buy this guy again. Might, might be one of those. So just just, just inquire about that. Dean Wade started with Struess out. Absolutely to nobody's surprise. Levert did more work, 19-1-4. Absolutely nobody's surprise. I think Levert is a must roster player, at least for now. And then when Struess comes back, we'll figure that out later. Whereas Wade... That's just a deeper league sort of discussion. But we also talked about Kenny Atkinson loving milk. He's a big dairy guy. Of course, do you want, do you want to start the unpasteurized debate here? Ty Jerome in the rotation, 14-2-6 with two steals. That's a bloody good line. Now, he's not an 86% shooter, 
but it's good. It's very good. So we'll see where that goes. Nowhere, most likely. But as a deeper league guy, ahead of Craig Porter and Jalen Tyson, who went in the rotation, interesting. On to our Toronto Raptors. Where should we go here? Emmanuel quickly left after 14 minutes. Fallon is back. I would say there's some doubt he plays in the next one, but it doesn't appear to be too long-term. But 13-2-4 in 14 minutes is a cracking start. There was no Rowan Barrett in this game. There was no Kelly Linick. There was no Bruce Brown. And then they lost quickly. So they were obviously very, very down in terms of players. It didn't stop Oshai Abaji from sucking. He started and had three points with a steal and a block. He took one shot, so I guess that's something. Don't roster him anywhere. Let's take a look at Scott Barnes. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. Nine, six, and five with no steals, no blocks, no threes, 21% shooting, and 75 from the line. I'm not here to tell you that Scotty Barnes is bad. He's obviously way better than this. But we also saw over the second half of last season that his shooting numbers went back to being bad, specifically three-point shooting. Because he had a hot run early on, and what he, what he did do was keep up the blocks and rebounds, and that all that stuck, and I'm not worried that much about it. But the shooting, much like Jalen Johnson, it regressed. And often, we don't look at that that much. Well, I do, because I talk about it like you know, ad nauseum. You'd probably say, stop talking about it, Josh. But it is important. Stinker from Barnes, don't worry. If quickly misses time, I expect it's Davion Mitchell that starts. He's just not very good, though. He had, what, eight points and three assists? Jamal Shedd looked better. He had 10, 1, and 4 with two steals. But that's just like a one-game stream, maybe. I don't think there's anything super exciting about that sort of um, situation. Also, shout out to Chris Boucher. Turned the clock back for 18 points. He's now 50 years old, Chris Boucher. So it's really impressive that he did, that, did this with four threes, a steal, and a block. Olenek was out. It was a blowout. I wouldn't, wor- I wouldn't look too much into adding Boucher here at all, but obviously that's a really good game. And a really bad night from Pirtle. No field goal percentage, no free throw. Well, I mean, he had them, but they were just really bad. He had six and nine and no defensive stats. Stinker of a game. Absolute stinker without question. All right, let's do the next game. The Charlotte Hornets, out of nowhere, get the win over the Rockets. The Rockets were leading this game comfortably, the whole game. And then, very late, Charlotte came back. 110-105, the final score. We'll quickly just touch on LaMelo Ball, looking awesome. 38 minutes in the first game. Holy crap. 34, 8, and 11. Steel block. 20 shots. 10 of 10 from the line. Unbelievable. Stay healthy, please. Josh Green was ruled out before the game, so Trey Mann played 29 minutes. We talked about Trey Mann a lot in the last week or two before the season. The size of the role they were giving him and that we thought Green would be marginalized anyway, he really popped off. 16 shot attempts is a lot, but 24 and 6 with 4 threes. Now, it does help that Brandon Miller left this game early after 11 minutes. So that helps, man. But, Add him. Like, no problem adding him. We don't know if Miller's going to miss time. No idea. No idea if Green misses any time. I think it's worth adding someone like him. Miles Bridges didn't do much. 10 and 9 with a steal and a block. Missed. Well, didn't take a single free throw. Nothing super exciting there. They started Cody Martin instead of Trey Mann, which is fine. But Martin's not going to be someone we're super interested in. Also, after big, big games throughout all of preseason, number six overall pick, Tisha and Salam, played zero minutes. Why? I thought he looked pretty good in those minutes. They used Musa Diabete as the backup center instead of Grant Williams uh, behind Nick Richards with no Mark Williams there, obviously. A lot of Williamses. Grant had eight and four and Diabete had two and five with two blocks. Like, cool. I don't think we need to worry too much about that. And I don't think that's a long-term solution for them. And as for Richards, I don't think we bother in 12s. Six and eight with two blocks. Miller, I don't think that's going to be a long-term thing, but the guy that started in the second half was unbelievably, did you know he played for this team? It's Seth Curry. Yeah, he had seven points. We're definitely not adding him. The one to add is Trey Mann. With Josh Green and Brandon Miller out, we'll see what happens. But he would be a fairly high priority add, I would think, um, at this point. We'll look at the Houston Rockets side of things. Really, really disappointing loss. I thought Shingun was absolutely cooking in this game. And then... About 4 minutes 30, the scores were tied. They took him out to get him a breather. He came back in with like a minute 30 left, and they were down at 8, I think, or 6. I'm not saying that was all because of Shingun, but yeah. 25 and 18, 5 assists, 4 steals, and a block. They played Jabari Smith at center in that stretch, who, by the way, we'll talk about in a second. Yuck. Um, that's huge from Shingun. I just wish he didn't have to come out in those last couple of minutes. 37 minutes for Van Vliet. Again, there was some thought that they would drop Van Vliet's minutes down. That did not happen. And I was fairly confident it wouldn't. Now, he shot horribly. 
22% from the field. He had 14, 4, and 6 with two steals. I would not be worried about him in the slightest. I would be very worried about Jabari Smith. I'm not ready to jack just yet, but eight points, 29%, one block. And I talked at length in the preseason about, what's he doing? There's just nothing happening. There's no usage. There's no room for him to grow. He's just doing nothing. He's like regressing. That's exactly what happened. Well, Jalen Green scored well. Unfortunately, he did nothing else. 28 points with two rebounds, zero assists, zero steals, and zero blocks, and shot 39 from the field. That's just the same sort of stuff that he usually does. The bench, we needed to know what was going on. Well, they still played a lot of Dylan Brooks, who had two points in 31 minutes. And Men Thompson, only 22. I would hold him in, but again, the warnings were very clear. There's not 27 minutes here. People going into round seven, round eight for a man, it didn't make any sense to me. We will see where it goes, but he's a 22-minute-a-night sixth man. Reed Shepard played 16 minutes, one of the clearest not-draftable players and jacks of all time. Get that garbage out of here. Oh, he's so good. He'll force minutes. He won't. I actually think Reed is, is going to be a pretty good player, but it's just not realistic to expect him to be ranked like 87 or whatever it was on ESPN. To think he's coming in, rolling at 30 minutes a night, demanding usage. It was crazy to see some of these things that happened. Tari never season had two points with two steals in 13 minutes. Like cool. Like just, there's no room for this to happen. And there was no Steven Adams in this game and only eight minutes for Cam Whitmore. There are too many good players on this team for them to succeed to the level that we think, whether it's me or you or whoever that think they can. And that's what I was very critical of with the ESPN rankings. The only time I've ever been critical of ESPN in my life. First time ever. Is that they were like, oh, men's like 70th and Reed Shepard's 90th. And okay, all this stuff is literally impossible to happen because there's just not enough minutes for this stuff to go around. It was impossible. There you go. I Again, I would not drop a men, but I'd consider it. I would definitely drop Reed. I would definitely drop Tari. If for some bloody reason you've got Dylan Brooks or if you've got um, Cam Whitmore, you're jacking them in most formats. A, a really bad loss from the Rockets. Um, and we'll see where they go from here. A yeah, really bad loss for the Rockets. All right. Now, I don't know what's happening. And those of you who are playing on ESPN Fantasy will be aware of this, that the numbers for the um, Bulls and Pelicans aren't working. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't know why they're there. And that's what the ESPN box score looks like. It says Bulls 81, Pelicans 80. That, of course, is not the real score. The score is 123 New Orleans, 111 to Chicago. Somehow, the actual numbers in the box score for the players, though, they're, they're correct. So I don't really know what happened there. I don't know why that is the way it is, apart from, you know, ESPN. Let's talk about the Bulls, who did start the usual lineup. Patrick Williams had a very, actually, really good game for Patrick Williams. Six points in 24 minutes with three rebounds. He did have a steal and a block, and we absolutely do not roster him in 12-team leagues. And then that meant that Matus Bozalis, their number 11 pick on a tanking team that is bad, would definitely have gotten... On, oh, sorry, no, he played five minutes. What? Why? So we could get eight minutes of Taylor Horton Tucker, the NBA's worst player. I cannot believe that a team... Yes, I can, because it's the Bulls and they're dumb. Why would they play Taylor Horton Tucker as the 10th man in this rotation? Absolute idiocy. Can you just get this guy out of the... What is he doing in this league? Far out. Zach Levine was great. 27, 5, and 3 with 5 threes. Shot the ball well. Fantastic. There is always a risk of a trade, but that is great. And Vooch had a very Vooch line. 21 and 11. No defensive stats, but really good percentages. Strong stuff. Only 31 minutes for Vooch. Kobe White, horrid. Horrid. You know that I was down on him this season. This doesn't mean that this is, he's going to be bad or anything. 10, 8, and 6, the shooting numbers are rough. But I love that he got rebounds, and I love that he got assists. And then Josh Giddy started and played 30 minutes for 14, 5, and 3. Now, unfortunately, Giddy's free throws were bad, his field goals were bad, and he didn't get any defensive stats. That is a lot of the Josh Giddy experience. But what is concerning are the rebounds low and the assists low. We're not dropping him. We're not dropping Kobe White or anything along those lines. Also, if you do have Matas Bozellas, because you thought maybe that would be worth a crack to see what this team does. Get that garbage out of here. We only got 25 minutes out of Ayo Desumu. Who had eight and four? Like and like we all say when we when I did all of this stuff and we talked about it, the two forty game is key. How do these players play enough? And the answer is they don't. Now, if you're in situations with roto and benches, benches for benches and stashing and, and all that sort of stuff, then sure, it's all different stories. You wait and you see maybe Matas gets a roll later on and Lavinia's trade and Dasumu steps up. But as of now, you can't do it. 
It was also awesome that Lonzo Ball played, and it's absolutely insane if you have him on your fantasy team. Get that garbage out of here! Five points in 14 minutes. It, it, you cannot do it. You must not hold him. I loved what we got from Sticks, Jalen Smith, who had 15 points. He had five rebounds. He had one man stood by. He had a three as well. He's one of those ones that we watched to see what they do with Vooch. The fact that he played 17 minutes and Vooch is 31 is interesting. 17 minutes, though, for Jalen Smith is not enough to be a regular 12-team league guy. It, it isn't, unfortunately. So, like, overall here, if you did take the flyer on Lonzo, if you, for some reason, like, left your brain in your bed, decided you were going to have Patrick Williams on your team, um, if you've got Desumu, like, all these guys can be moved on from. Levine, Vooch, White, Giddy, we hold them. We hold those guys at, uh, at this stage of the game. Let's go to the next one, or the next side of this game. And it is, of course, your New Orleans Pelicans. And the bad news here, the headline news is DeJounte Murray, after registering nearly a triple-double on 27% shooting, uh, broke his hand. And we know the story on a broken hand. We know that it's good in terms of there is a definitive timeline nearly always, but this is four weeks. This is four to six weeks, minimum four, nearly every single time. So that's what's going to happen. The complicating factor here is, is that Zion Williamson didn't play. So it is conceivable for the 30 minutes that DeJounte Murray played in this game, I just replaced by Zion Williamson next game, and everything you see here is exactly what it will be in the next one. So Jordan Hawkins got the bump, 28 minutes. He had 13 and 7 with three threes, but he got the bump because Zion was out, not because DeJounte was out. But again, it could just be, very easily, a straight swap of Zion for DeJounte. I would not bother with 13 minutes of Jose Alvarado unless Zion is sick next game. He had three points here, Jose. Herb Jones stunk. He had two steals, and that's fine, but that is what he is. That is what he is. That is why you never believe a top 40 ranking of Herb Jones. Two points, four rebounds, 33 minutes. He had a trip to the locker room, but he played solid minutes. Well, Ingram, without Zion, no surprise, able to put up numbers. 33 and seven, two steals and a block. If you were able to do a sell high on Ingram, this is when you would do it. What they're also going to do, they have to do, they won't start Jose Alvarado. I'm very confident of that. They'll just move CJ McCollum back to point guard. He had 23, 2, and 5 with 5 threes. Really good game from CJ. And again, just frustrating that we're still not going to get to see this team together. The standout performer outside of like big games from Ingram, McCollum, and even DeJounte. And on DeJounte, assists and rebounds up like the Spurs day. That's why I was happy to get him in round three or even late round two. Eve Missy, big game from the big fella. Three blocks, 12 and 7, 23 minutes. Now, they claim they're going to go centerless and Herb Jones is their center, but we all knew that that was always a lie. Zion was going to be the center, not Herb Jones, and that is why centers, Misi and Misic, Misic, what am I talking about? Misi and Tice, Misic, what am I talking about? Um, they combined for, what was it, 41 minutes? We're not going to run a center. Yeah, cool. That's because Zion was out. So they played 41 minutes. So again, now with DeJounte there, I think that that center run of nearly all of those guys getting a lot of minutes will hold. Misi, look, I don't... Look, if Honestly, if you had Daniel Tice, you obviously don't hold him. Misi's interesting. The blocks are really good. I don't think they're going to push him to 25 minutes or anything like that. But with the absence of DeJounte, and if Zion misses the next game, it, they could just start Misi. Go Misi, Ingram, McCullum, Jones. Probably need someone else in there as well. They could eat, honestly, they could, I said they could even start Messi in the next game, but they won't because Zion will just replace um, CJ. But really strong outing from Eve. And I'd be, I'd, I'd be marginally interested. I wouldn't say he's a rush, rush, rush guy. And this, I would, though, add Messi over Hawkins. Hawkins was fine, 13 and 7. Like, that's okay. But I, unless Zion remains out, I don't really see what improves from this game for Jordan Hawkins. I, I don't think much actually jumps up from there. Again, all of this stuff could be wrong. We don't know. It's the complicating factor is no Zion in this one. But yeah, that's that's where I'd be um, I'd be sitting with that one. Let's go on to the next one. It is your Memphis Grizzlies up against the Utah Jazz. The Grizzlies get out of jail uh, in this one in the end. 126-124, the final score. Zach Eady did in fact start and fouled out in under 15 minutes. He had five and five with no other stats. He was one of five from the line as well. Now, he was a decent free throw shooter. He wasn't 80%. He was like 70% in college. He also never had any fouls in college. Um, man, that means he didn't block any shots, but this is obviously incredibly disappointing. I did not think he was impressive, but he is a rookie. Admittedly, one that I wasn't high on to begin with. 
if you did make the plunge and take Edie inside the top 100, apologies to you for doing that. But I, I would hold. I would hold. Always remember. Always remember. You know what I'm going to say. Understand where the person talking to you comes from. I was down on Edie. I did not have him close to a top 100 player. In fact, I think I had him ranked 160th heading into this season. I did not like him as a draft prospect. So when I say, eh, like I'm not that disappointed because I don't know how good he is. And when I throw out you know, comments about the highlight reel bias stuff through preseason, yeah, I am down on him. I know that. But this was bad. I would still probably hold for a game or two, but I, I don't think they can be competitive or as good as they want to be if he's playing a large role. Santiago Dama got red hot. His shooting was terrible last season, but shot 63% here. 27-5 and five with five threes. Well, Ja Morant, a very Ja Morant game, except for a couple of things. Well, actually, one thing. Only 28 minutes, but he had 22-5-10, and 10, and he went 8-9 of nine from the line, which he does not do. Of course, he didn't hit any threes and only had one steal, and that has always been the drawback for him. I should have mentioned with Aldama, I'll, get, I'll do that now, is that if Jaron remains out and their next batch of games is a Friday, Saturday, back-to-back, he will not play both of those games, Jaron Jackson, 100%, 100% assured, he will not. So you hold on to Aldama and you use him in one of those two games, maybe both. Desi Bain played 27, he had 24, 4, and 4, while old mate Jay Huff, oh yeah. Jay Huff's an older player, he's a two-way guy, eh, he's, uh, he's not bad. 13 and 5, two blocks, I like Huff, I don't know how much we're going to get out of him, but Edie fouled out, Brandon Clark was terrible, Two points in this one, um, really struggled. And then even Marcus Smart, like, yeah, he's... Oh, do we do it? Do we do it? I think we might. He does uh, not look good at the moment, Marcus Smart. 11 and 5 in his 26 minutes. He's a soft hold. Scotty Pippen, predictably good. Six points, seven assists, three steals, a block. If he ever starts, he would be an absolute guaranteed, without any question whatsoever, must roster. The other guy that's interesting, rookie Jalen Wells, played a big role. Now, he only had six points, but in deeper leagues, the fact that he's in the rotation, now it, it's because Canard, Williams, Jackson are all out, and even Jaron, but it was interesting that he played 23 minutes Jalen Wells. On to the Utah Jazzmen. Really interesting stuff from this team. They went with the starting line. We thought they did, but it was Walker Kessler playing 30 minutes, which is a little bit more than I thought. I thought 27 would be real. 16, 14, five blocks, amazing. And he hit his free throws. If he's on your waiver wire, for some reason, please go and add him. Markinen was great, 35 and nine. And even Jordan Clarkson really put together a big game. 17, five and seven for the man on the street. 44% from the field sucks, but overall, those numbers are fine. He is totally okay to roster. I won't say he's awesome with a big upside, but he's okay. It was also a little bit of a weird game because Colin Sexton only played 25 minutes. Now, the return from Sexo, pretty good. Fine. 16, 2, and 3. Taylor Hendricks, quiet first half, really good second half. 12 and 5, three threes, two steals, and a block. He is easily preferred over Noah Clowney because he is starting. There's no guarantee that Hendricks is going to get whatever usage, yeah, even more than 11% that he had here, but he brings it defensively. He brings the boom. Some might say. That's what he does. What else do we need to talk about here? Let's talk about some things that were bad. The speaker, Keontae George. 12, 2, and 7 on the surface. He's, he's, he's okay. But 17% from the field is dreadful. And then he somehow bricked his free throws. 5 from 9. I would highly, highly recommend do not drop Keontae George. He played 31 minutes. He took a lot of shots. He had a lot of assists. He might not be a good shooter. In fact, he probably isn't. But nobody is this bad. Nobody. Taylor Horton Tucker exception. Nobody is this bad. Hold him. Cody Williams. Um, my fears with Williams as a prospect and a player early in his career would he would be incredibly passive. He played 19 minutes and took a grand total of zero shots. He had no assists and had two points with four rebounds. Um, yeah. It's not going to do much. In fact, I don't think there's been one rookie who's been good. So far, and that is, um, why am I just blanking? Eve Missy, the only rookie that's actually been good so far. Which is not a surprise, because it was, again, despite the contrarian takes, it was a bad, bad draft class. Go on to the next game to cover here. It is the Golden State Warriors and the Portland Trailblazers. Big, easy win here for the Warriors. Final score, 139-104, and our mate, foreseeable legend, um... Foreseeable future legend Steve Kerr said that after the game, he's going to continue with a 12-man rotation. So, RIP to everybody's value. 
they started the big lineup, which Steve Kerr said he'd love to start this for the rest of the year, which you know means in two days he will change his mind. So that meant Wiggins, Kaminga, Green, and Jackson Davis. Let's start with Steph, who only played 25 minutes here, had 17, 9, and 10 with two steals. Also, it's impossible for us to get a gauge of the minutes here because it was a blowout immediately. But he healed, went crazy, and I would beg, plead, implore you to keep it in your virtual pants. How often do you think that Buddy Heald is going to drop in 22 points in under 15 minutes? How often do you think that Buddy Heald is going to run with a 35% usage and hit 67% of his shots, including 71% from the three? He might be a good shooter, Shivano, but he's not that. No one is. And in a 12-man rotation, you cannot add him. You can't. Wiggins, 20 points in 23 minutes, but I don't know that that makes any sense because of this team, who knows, against the Blazers. Like, with 12 men, you can't do it. Would I bother with Trace Jackson Davis? I might. 14 and 4 in 25 minutes. He probably is one of the ones who can get it done in 23. So he probably would be an add to me. Melton had 10 points in 19 minutes. We don't do anything with that. Get that garbage out of here. And honestly... Mr. I'm going to get 8 to 10 threes per game. Brandon Pajemski went scoreless. He took five shots in total and had seven rebounds and four assists, but he played 25 minutes. And honestly, if there is somebody that you want to add, we talked about this ad nauseum. There are too many guys. And that's why all of these players should have been heading outside the top 100 because we just didn't know. And now we know. And it's worse than what we thought. Get that garbage out of here. See ya, pods. We got 15 minutes for Moses Moody. I love Moses Moody. There's not enough playing time here. John Kaminga. That one's iffy. I would probably hold, but 20 minutes will never cut it for him. Never. He had 10 and 4, 20 minutes with a block. I mean, cool, but he's never, like, that That will never work long term. I would, ho- if I'm considering this one, I would not bother with Buddy Heald. I would consider a drop of Andrew Wiggins. I would drop D'Anthony Melton. I would consider dropping Brandon Pajemski. Jackson Davis can get it done, and Kaminga is a soft, soft hold for now. Draymond only played 20 minutes in this game, but he just Draymond, apart from the dick hits, he had eight, six, and three with one steal and two blocks. That is, that's Draymond. That's what Draymond does. Again, apart from the dick hits. The Blazers, yeah, I, I pre-warned you, so I hope nobody got shocked that Scoot Henderson wasn't starting because he was not planning on starting. They, they Again, this franchise is dumb at times. Scoot was fine, though. 22, four, and four. 39% sucks, but 88 from the line is good. Hold him. Denny Avdia. Nice. The two steals and two blocks. He's not going to do that all the time, but that's really good. 15 and 7 in 27 minutes, while Aiton, the snowman, had 10 and 11. Those of you who added Donovan Klingon because he had a big game in the preseason, you know what to do. Get that garbage out of here. Two points, a hard fall late in the game, 13 minutes, absolutely zero reason unless you're considering a stash until February. There just isn't minutes here. What I'm most interested about here, not about Jeremy Grant and his complete refusal to rebound and all he does is jack shots, 18 shots at 33% shooting. He had 16 and two, good for him. But Tamani Kamara was great. 30 minutes for Kamara, 11, six and four with two steals. That in itself is a 12 team line. Now I don't have the highest level of confidence that he's going to be able to maintain that level of production, but that was really good. If I'm in a 14 team league, uh, at least I'm a little bit like aware. Oh, okay. That's something. Something interesting. But Jack Klingon, hold Scoot. Kamara, maybe. Honestly, Jeremy Grant will end up being a Jack at some point, probably. He's just frustrating. And then there was a, just a bad night from Simons. 15, 2, and 3. He got a steal. That's about one-sixth of his total of steals from last season. And what else did he do? Not much else. We had 17 Ryan repair minutes, which, for the record, is more minutes than Donovan Klingon played. Let's move along to the final game of the night. A team that supposedly is good going up against a team that is bad. And it went to overtime. Not great for Phoenix there, but that is what it is. 116-113, Phoenix squeaks out the win. Gigantic minutes. Now, obviously, overtime is a factor, but 44 minutes for Kevin Durant is literally crazy. He was a bit inefficient. Seven of nine from the line, and that was part of the concern that weirdly that all dropped off end of last season. He was 47 from the field, but overall, 25 and seven with three steals and a block is great. But what we did see in this game is with the addition of Tyus Jones that Beal and Durant's assists disappeared. Zero for Durant, one for Beal. 
Beal had 24 and 3 with four threes. Good game. Excellent shooting. Jones played 35 minutes. He had only 11 points, but eight assists, two steals, and a block. So they played him a lot. How much of that is the return from Grayson Allen from the Achilles soreness? I don't know, but Allen played only 21 minutes. Last season, Allen played 35 minutes a night. So I don't know. I don't know how all that will um, will play out. Obviously, I think I didn't even really click to this, that Budenholzer coached Grayson Allen in Milwaukee. That's really low minutes. And they closed the game with Royce O'Neal instead of Yusuf Nurkic. Now, Nurkic had early fouls, and the line is actually okay. It's not great, but it's okay. 11-9 and nine with two steals. But definitely some surprises. I didn't think we'd see a 35-minute Tyus Jones versus 21 Grayson Allen. Ryan Dunn, preseason legend, played nine minutes. Some people added him. You can obviously drop him. Um, Royce O'Neal played 24, and Nurkic played 22. I don't think that the Nurkic 22, Allen 21, Jones 35 minutes grouping is a realistic thing for every night. But what was interesting is the Beal and Durant assists disappearing. Beal and Durant... Beal played 33 minutes in regulation. Durant played a lot, like still 37. So that's one to watch. Why is he getting so many minutes under Budenholzer? We will find out how that continues. But also, they probably just needed him. Um, Booker, 15 points, 9 shots is, is comical. Why only 9 shots? Very low usage for Devin. Not that he shot poorly. 14, 4, and 6 with 4 threes. Obviously, just not a good game in general for this team. Tyus Jones took more shots than Devin Booker. Don't think you can really... Like, that's one of those weird opening night things where you go, huh, probably means nothing. Probably means nothing at all. Nothing at all. But it happened. So we report on it. We just don't overreact to it. We go now on to look at the Clippers side of things, which, again, some interesting things happened. We'll talk about their lineup, which is what we expected it to be. It was Harden, Powell, Mann, Jones, and Zubats. And let's start with Zubats, the man that Ty Lue does not like to give big minutes to. Played 29 in regulation. Actually, played more than that because he fouled out. 34 minutes, 21 and 9. Now, I was very big on this would be the season that Zubats would at least touch his nose to the edge of 30 minutes. And I think we're going to get there. He looks like he could end up being a steal. Well, Jimmy played 40 minutes, Jim Harden, 29, 12 and 8 with a steal. He shot horribly. And only 7 of 9 from the line. But I talked about in the Clippers previous that I would not be shocked if we got back a 27 or 25, 7 and 10 season from Harden. I didn't expect it. I said I would not be shocked. Well, interesting. Very interesting start. Derek Jones Jr., that's pretty good. 12 and 4 with two steals and two threes. On the whole, look, if he does that every night, that that is 12 team worthy. I don't think he will. He's more of a deeper league guy to me. While man did nothing, and please, we will have to get over rostering Trevor, Terrence Man. Why are people still doing it? Also, shout out to Kevin Porter. Shouldn't be in the league, but played 13 minutes and had two points. So, yeah, we can jack his ass off. Get that garbage out of here. In fact, because it's Kevin Porter, get that garbage out of here. They just didn't play him. Amir Coffey got the minutes. Chris Dunn got the minutes. 11 and 3 for Coffey, 5 and 4 with two steals. We thought, and I thought actually, as much as I hated them signing Kevin Porter, I thought there's not many guys who can create their own shot here. He'll have to play. Nah, guess not. Kai Jones was the backup center. He had 6 and 4. I had a question. This was on the Basketball Monster Forum. And they were like, man, do you think that like Zubats is only playing these minutes because Bumba is out? It is worth a daily reminder. Bumba sucks. He's terrible. I don't think that Zubats is playing minutes because Bumba's not there. He's bad. So I actually think that Zubats' role is, is relatively locked in here. And it was a pretty good Norman Powell game apart from the shooting. 31% is bad, but 17, 4, and 4, and 40 minutes. So if Powell is on your wire, you're going at him. Jones is a deeper league one. Man, we drop. I think you can consider Porter a drop. That is obviously a horrible start in terms of minutes distribution. You can wait. Like You don't have to, like, you don't have to drop someone if there's no one to add. But you know, that is obviously... Obviously, not remotely close to being um, good enough for where where we need to be. That'll bring us 10 games in into the monstrous line of the night. It was a close one. It was very, very tight. That's what she said. But in the end, your monstrous line of the night is, I, I, I hope, I hope it can continue. LaMelo Ball, 34 points, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists. The man was cooking a million minutes. He looked great. Please get to 60 games. Please get to 60 games. Please. Um, the waiver wire line of the night. The best player available in over 50% of leagues, according to our advanced roster metric. It is the big man, 
in Memphis. Santi Aldama, 27 points, 5 of 10 from 3, 63 from the field. Now, he did not shoot anywhere remotely close to this last season. Nobody will. He will have opportunities if Jaron remains out, so I don't mind him as a stream guy with a back-to-back coming up, but otherwise, I don't see how he holds as a 12-team league guy. But nonetheless, really good performance. For the second day in a row, our pickings for a young gun were very slim. Unless I just skipped over someone, I didn't see anyone who came up on my list before Eve Misi, who had 12-7 with three blocks. Like I said, if Zion misses again, I think Misi does a little bit more, but they played Tice and Misi basically all of the center minutes. And next game, I just think that Zion, and it is confirmed on DeJounte, by the way, broken hand, that'll be four to six. Zion will just come in and take DeJounte's minutes, and the rest of the rotation can stay relatively similar. So Misi could be interesting. Hard to get super excited, but I don't mind the out of him. I don't I don't mind it. I'm not loving it, but I don't mind it. We had a few options for the dud of the night. At least I had more more opportunities here to get a young guy in for an award because it was either between uh well it was this guy that got it, but Zach Rissache would have got it. He just wasn't rostered in enough leagues for me to get there in the end. It's Zach Eady, who fouled out in under 15 minutes. He had five points and five rebounds, and again, I would hold for now but I am incredibly skeptical. Incredibly skeptical that he is doing a huge amount this season. He won't foul out every game, and he will have bigger games. But I remain very skeptical about how he has success in the NBA at this point. Skeptical. Let's take a look at the top sixes, the categories, the waiver wire, the Yahoo points guys that are worth us um, just mentioning. The top six in category leagues today, well, you already know who number one it is, is Lamella Ball, followed by the delicate dancer Alperin Shengun. My mate Cam Thomas was next, followed by my other mate Evan Mobley, followed by Walker Kessler, and followed by Trey Young. Your top six waiver wire producers, all available in over 50% of leagues. Santi Aldama, that's obviously a Jaron Jackson thing. I think Trey Mann's worth an ad. Josh Green, I don't know if he'll return. Well, I don't know when he returns. Uh, I don't know what Brandon Miller's story is, but man, looked really good. I don't mind the ad. It's going to be, I think he could move into like a Jordan Clarkson two years ago sort of role, which was really good. So man is interesting. Gary Harris, you can throw that one in the bin. Milk, Ty Jerome, you can also extra dollop. You can also throw that into the bin. I don't think we worry about that outside of deeper leagues. Eve Misi, just spoke about it. And big fella, Darvin Ham's son, Torian, Prince Ham. He was really good. He's going to start while Middleton is out. Deeper leagues only, though. We do not care otherwise. And then your top six Yahoo points producers for the day. Shingun just edged Lamelo Ball. He also got more fantasy points than him. Trey Young was third. Paolo Banquero fourth. Cam Thomas fifth. And Evan Mobley, the koala, in at number six. And that is our first absolute jam-packed banger of the season. Ten games. Lots to talk about. I hope you enjoyed it. Weirdly, there's not many actual, like... Yeah, massive must-add players off the waiver wire in these first couple of days. And usually you get something popping up. There's not, not much. And I think that's because a lot of what we did on, on this show and even just regular drafts and ADPs, they seem relatively bang on. I think we nailed a lot of this stuff. I, I, two days in, of course, but usually something completely out of whack happens. And it didn't really happen here. Something to monitor. Hit the thumb. Maybe if that worked, didn't work. Where's my little thumber? Thumb it in. There it is. Bang it in. Comment. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. (laughs) See ya.